In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to those who join us in church. Welcome to those, too, who are joining us by the live stream. And for the next few weeks, at least, we have a rather unusual hybrid, uh, because there are people at home who would like to contribute to the readings, etc., and therefore here in church, we will hear the readings played from people's homes but also uh, the opportunity for people at home uh, to be involved in the music. So there has been an opening hymn, which I could see on the monitor, but which we couldn't hear here in church. And we, indeed, we won't hear any of the, the music uh, because singing in church is not to be encouraged. If anyone can make sense of how all this comes together, it's surely the Lord, and we just come into his presence. 
confident that all that truly matters is that he is here and he will speak to us and we will share that presence. The readings will remind us of the importance of forgiveness. And so we pause for a moment and we ask that gift of God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. This Mass is offered through the intention of Ralph, Bertha and Pius Braganza. So let us pray. Show favour, O Lord, to your servants and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith and charity they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God other than you who cares for everything, to whom you might have to prove that you never judged unjustly. Your justice has its source in strength, your sovereignty over all makes you lenient to all. You show your strength when your sovereign power is questioned and you expose the insolence of those who know it. But, disposing of such strength, you are mild in judgment. You govern us with great lenience, for you have only to will and your power is there. By acting thus, you have taught a lesson to your people, how the virtuous man must be kindly to his fellow men. And you have given your sons the good hope that after sin you will grant repentance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, you are good and forgiving. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of love to all who call. Give And attend to the sound of my voice. O Lord, you are good and forgiving. O Lord, you are good and A reading from the letter to the Romans. The Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. For when we cannot choose words in order to pray properly, the Spirit himself expresses our plea in a way that could never be put into words. And God, who knows everything in our hearts, knows perfectly well what he means, and that the pleas of the saints expressed by the Spirit are according to the mind of God. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus put a parable before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everybody was asleep, his enemy came, sowed down all among the wheat, and made off. When the new wheat sprouted and ripened, the darnel appeared as well. The owner's servants went to him and said, Sir, was it not good seed that you sowed in your field? If so, where does the darnel come from? And he said, Some enemy has done this. And the servant said, Do you want us to go and weed it out? But he said, No, because when you weed out the darnel, you might pull up the wheat with it. Let them both grow till the harvest. At the harvest time, I shall say to the reapers, first collect the darnel and tie it in bundles to be burnt. Then gather the wheat into my barn. He put another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the biggest shrub of all and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and shelter in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour till it was leavened all through. In all this, Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he will never speak to them except in parables. This was to fulfill the prophecy, I will speak to you in parables and expound things hidden since the foundation of the world. Then, leaving the crowds, he went to the house, and his disciples came to him and said to him, Explain the parable about the darnel in the field to us. He said in reply, The sir of the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed is the subjects of the kingdom. The darnel, the subjects of the evil one. The enemy has sowed them, the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are the angels. Well then, just as the darnel is gathered up and burnt in the fire, so it will be at the end of time. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that provoke offences and all who do evil and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Then the virtuous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Listen, anyone who has ears. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was about this time of year in my former parish 
where I was invited to a post-First Communion celebration uh, where the family and children had got together. The children, as happens on what was then a lovely sunny day, by contrast to this, were all outside playing in the garden. The adults were all in the kitchen having a cup of tea or whatever it was that was on offer. Occasionally, the mother would go to the French doors and would shout, leave Peter alone and would then come back and carry on with the chat. And a couple of minutes later, she went and said, I said, leave Peter alone. So I said, uh, are they bullying Peter? No, she said, uh, Peter was the name of their rabbit. So I said, oh, aren't they allowed to play with the rabbit? Well, not now, she said. It died about a week ago, and we buried it in the garden, she said. And they keep digging it up to see what's happening to Peter three, four, ten days after it died. What struck me about it was the interest the children had in what happens after death, and they were clearly open to what the various options might be. By contrast, uh, the Pharisees, as we know, and we heard often in the Gospels, are very closed-minded about what will happen at the moment of death, because they have decided that these tax collectors and these sinners are to be written off. They are clearly uh, not worthy of his presence. They are shocked that he should spend any time with them. As far as they're concerned, uh, any goodness they once had is over. And this parable is a challenge to them. It's a challenge uh, about uh, the darnel and the wheat and the way in which you have to wait and be patient to tell the difference. I'm not a gardener. I don't know if anybody here is or anybody watching on the live stream. I struggle to tell the difference between a plant and a weed when they're full grown, especially if the weed's got colour to it. And the thought that you would, at the moment they're first growing, and I've researched this, apparently wheat and darnel, when they're young shoots, are identical. And therefore, it takes a real patience in order to wait and to see what they will become. The Pharisees should have recognized that that is how God is with his people, how God is with them. They should have recalled what we've just heard in that book of wisdom, the first reading, God reminding his people of that great patience he has to allow them to change, to allow them to come back. Time and time again, the people have gone from God and we're reminded but you are mild in judgment, you governors with great lenience. And it goes on to conclude that there is a lesson to be learnt from that, that that is how we should be with one another. It's how the Pharisees and others should have been uh, with the people around them. Because wisdom says to God, by acting thus, you have taught a lesson to your people how the virtuous one must be kindly to his fellows, and you've given us the good hope that after sin you will grant repentance. The Pharisees had clearly not learnt that lesson. We know that they didn't learn it even after they'd heard that gospel about leaving judgment to God, about allowing people to mature about allowing the possibility of change in our lives, of a metanoia, of a coming back to God. Maybe it's difficult to imagine for other people unless you've experienced it for yourself. St. Paul, who we heard in that second reading, a reading not connected with the theme of these Gospels, uh, of these other readings, but St. Paul himself, a man who of course has had that experience. And reason to be grateful that people had allowed him to change. The early Christian community would have been quite justified, perhaps, in saying, he's the persecutor, he's the one who caused great suffering, he's the one who, perhaps to my own family and friends, behaved in such an atrocious way. And yet they allow him to change. God allows him to change. And St. Paul becomes that extraordinary gift to us and to the church. It enabled him to write, the Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. God, who knows everything in our hearts, knows perfectly well what he means, and that the pleas of the saints, expressed by the Spirit, 
are according to the mind of God. We've been reminded over these weeks that we are called to be saints. We're encouraged that there is time to change. We're encouraged that we can, if we live according to the mind of God, join St. Paul and that great heavenly gathering around the throne. We pray for each other that our mutual encouragement and forgiveness will enable each of us to live. And so we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You know, when we gather together, in this way, uh, we're asked not to have the prayers of the faithful, not to have the offertory procession, or you'll be glad to hear the collection. And so we sit to give thanks to God for his gifts. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise and glory to his name, for our good and the good of all his Holy Spirit. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion 
varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Yes, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Look at it.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you've imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Part of the reduction in the liturgy, the notices are meant to be much more focused uh, children's Liturgy, to remind, wonderful resource, is available on the website. It keeps featuring rabbits, so I'm not entirely sure my homily was entirely appropriate, uh, but do please recommend children and grandchildren to go there. This evening, 6 p.m., evening prayer. Uh, tomorrow, 7 p.m., there is Zoom Rosary. I forgot to put it in the email. I apologize. Everything else should be in the email, which gets distributed on a Friday afternoon, or indeed on the website, which is quite excellent. At, um, can I just thank, though, the, the stewards who've made it possible for people to be here this morning. Thank you. Your work is much appreciated, especially the cleaning that goes on behind the scenes. And again, to the IT team who make so much possible and who put a great deal of work into preparing uh, that thousand uh, reasons uh, lit liturgy, in a way, um, involving all the parish, which I know is going to be played at the end of Mass. So thank you for that. I did summon the screams in church but I'm not sure the projectors have responded, so we may or may not see it along with everybody else. The Lord be with you. And, your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, Worship his holy 